This uh, abstract art workshop is brought to you by Lewin Gallery in celebration of Cunin and Oak uh, with funding support from Creative Ireland and Westmead County Council. Do you ever fall? It's an hour dum vet live in you. Con amahahav a kind of free Alina. Agus kahoyra Alina Teddy. It's an honour for me to be here today to uh, discuss with you um, and to spend some time with you discussing art and in particular abstract art. Uh, my name is Colin McGuffley. I'm, I'm a painter and I am currently showing at Loon Gallery. Um, my exhibition Percept is uh, comprised of a series of paintings um, which are all abstract and they deal with ideas of memory and retelling, uh, retelling of the image. Um, so this way of working uh, abstract art and different abstract painting is something that I use in my, in my studio practice. Uh, I would like in this workshop to discuss with you how I research and how I use and approach abstraction in my work. Um, we will be doing a, an artwork today together and I'm hoping that you will come away with some new ways of looking at art and new ways of working. So when we think about what is abstract art, uh, it's art that is non-representational. We think of Picasso um, or artists like Fernand Leger, um, whose work, I suppose, depicts um, a different version of reality, according to them. Um, a work that's defined by shape, pattern, colour, uh, instead of reality, uh, or instead of the way we normally look at the world. So it was an alternative uh, way of looking at the world uh, and told through art and made a, a clear um, move away from the classical school of painting, uh, which was about depicting uh, the world or nature as close to reality as possible. Uh, in fact, it was development of uh, photography, which in fact did this to uh, the best degree and in which way freed art uh, up to um, explore different routes and different ways of representing the world around it. Um, so I suppose, yeah, artists such as Pablo Picasso um, were quite noted for pushing painting in this direction. So what the way we normally look at nature, for example, um, abstract art would be an abstracted version of looking at that or a different way of looking at it, um, replacing the colour of nature with uh, different colours or lines or gestures or marks or even taking uh, a scene uh, of figures and changing the, the composition, changing the colours, changing the way they look but still having a little echo of what happened, of what the original image is actually really, really about. So in this uh, workshop we'll be basing our artwork on our own found images. Uh, I've selected some photographs I took during the lockdown uh, when I was out cycling quite a lot. And for me, the quietness of the lockdown, um, I feel kind of led me to get a little reconnected with nature, if that makes sense. Um, there was a, a real, I don't know, a, a quietness kind of fell on the city and uh, I just got on my bike and I used to ride for long cycles in, uh, in the countryside. And I'd often take photographs as I went around. Um, and I was seeing parts of my surroundings that I hadn't really noticed before. And for me, this is a, a sort of a positive that I would have taken from the, the lockdown. And uh, I felt I wanted to make a body of work, some paintings based on this. Um, so it actually really inspired um, a lot of my paintings from the last year. So uh, I wonder if this is something that you guys can also think about. Was there something positive that happened during the lockdown? Did you, like me, um, become a little bit more aware of your surroundings? Uh, did you reconnect with nature in some way? Or maybe reconnect with an old friend or take up a hobby? Um, this is what I'm looking for, actually. And this will be a great source of material to start with. And if you have a photograph or even if you can find an image or even if you were doing some drawings during this time, Let's use that. Um, so I'll show you the, the photograph. I've, I've, I've printed out some works, but um, I'm going to base my piece on this. And it's a, as you can see, it's a photograph of a lake. 
that I used to pass by uh, quite regularly. So this is the one I'll be using. Okay, so um, I'll now show you the materials that we'll be working with. Um, these, the list of materials should be uh, written, uh, written down, easy to access there on the link. Um, but I'll show you, I'll just go through them now. Uh, you'll need a pencil. Um, doesn't really matter, like now if it's a light or a dark one. A basic pencil is what you need. Uh, we'll also be using some brushes. If you have a selection of brushes, that's even better. Um, I just have a few different types of brushes there. Like you now you have a, it's nice having a very a thin one if you can get one, or a basic, you know, kind of wide brush as well, or a wider one, even better. So having a range of brushes is good. Um, and I don't know if, you, if anyone's into calligraphy and you have one of these little uh, calligraphy uh, pens, is also quite nice to use. Um, for mixing our paints, um, oh, well, first of all, I'll show you. We have, uh, I just have some basic acrylic paint. So if you have poster paint or acrylic paint, that's absolutely fine. That works. Um, and if you don't have paints, it's okay. You can also do uh, color pencils. So I just have a basic set of color pencils here as well. So the same idea applies when we're going to be using that. Um, for mixing your paints, um, you'll need a little jar of water. Um, you'll also need like an old rag or some tissue as well, just for um, for drying the, the brushes. And then for mixing your uh, paints, you can use anything like an old plate, or I usually find these like Tupperware tops uh, quite handy as well. And because it's acrylic and it's water-based, it's quite easy to wash off afterwards. That's fine. Um, and we'll also be uh, needing a little bit of masking tape or blue tape if you have some. And uh, to prepare the uh, surface of what we're on the area that we're working on and um, I have a bit of paper as well so and now if you have cartridge paper or printing paper that's fine but if you can get your hands on a heavier type of paper and um, it's usually better uh, for painting because it can it doesn't uh, warp as much and it's better to paint on so I, I've got a slightly heavier piece of paper which I like to use and um, so when you're painting on, on paper uh, this doesn't really affect you if you're drawing on paper, but when you're painting on paper, um, you're obviously going to be putting, uh, mixing kind of your paints with water, and there's already water in the paints. So when you when a paper gets wet, as you know, it kind of bends up. So a really good way to prepare your surface when you're working that you can paint on it and that it'll dry flat is by actually taping down your your page onto a table or a flat surface. Um, so if you have a worktop table to work on, that's brilliant because you want to leave this taped, uh, paper taped on uh, while you're actually working on it and for a few hours afterwards while the paint is drying and then you can remove it. So I'll just go ahead. So you're more or less going to be taping it down. Try and be as neat as, as, you, as possible. So kind of half on the paper, half on the surface that you're working on like that. <laughs> There you go, you've got your uh, page ready to go. Now this page is like a, what size is this, A3. Uh, so an A3 would be a nice size, you can still do it on A4, that's fine. Or if you want to go bigger, feel free, it's up to you. Uh, it'll take longer to work on, but... Okay, so when we have a, we have our image that we're working from, in my case it's my, my, uh, the photograph of this uh, landscape. Um, you might be working with a photograph of a person or uh, your pet or whatever it is. Um, what we're looking for is actually just the outline of the image itself. Um, because we will, we are just using the outline of whatever outline we can find. We're going to draw this and then afterwards um, with, with colour and shape we, we're going to abstract the image essentially. So. Um, it, so if in that case, it's not hugely important that you're a very accurate drawer, you know. Um, there's always room for um, a little bit of movement, you know, and to not be absolutely accurate. It's an impression of what we're, we're drawing is what we want. So, 
Um, I'm going to follow this, the water line that goes across here to start with, and that gives me a rough idea of um, the, the positioning of everything. And then I'll, um, I think I might draw the, the reflection of the trees next, so it's kind of coming around from there, and the flow of the water with that, the ripples. Now, as you can see, I'm not being so, I'm not, I'm not um, spending a lot of time to get this absolutely accurate. I'm just looking for the, as I said, the outline and um, a rough idea of where things are. It's almost like you're trying to find shapes in the actual image itself as you're looking at it. So it's not about the detail. It's about these natural shapes that are occurring in the image. And for me, this is very interesting. Because you're not making them up, they actually are there. But you, your eye is looking at them differently. up here. I'll do another. Okay. And then we have what looks seems to be a tree coming up like that. Beside another tree there. And then another type of tree in the background there, which is crawling up behind. And then here I have a little bit of light that's coming through a gap in the trees I think. And uh, over here, it looks like there's another, another bush, so. So we have, I mean, that's a very, very simplified, I would call it a, nearly a line drawing of this. It doesn't have to be absolutely accurate, but it's roughly the composition of the photograph done in a very simple line form. And I'm happy that I've got enough information and shapes here to work with. Now, when we are uh, when we're working with color, and uh, when I work with painting, um, there's a few different ways you can start building up a painting. Um, and one of the uh, easiest ways that allows us to make maybe some better decisions with what colors we use is by starting with slightly uh, lighter colors first, and then building up um, your 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 composition. Um, so by that I mean maybe let's, let's not start with a, a very strong heavy colour first. Um, so to make a lighter colour we need to mix uh, white um, with whatever colour that's going to be. So I'm just going to put a little bit of white here and let's see what we'll start with. Um, maybe do a light blue. Okay so uh, we only need a very small bit of blue compared to that bit of white. Um, I am going to start by wetting my brush and adding some water to the two colours. So you're mixing, you're mixing the, 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 the paint together and you're also mixing some water into it as well um, to make it more watery. So I could do. I'm just dipping the, the brush into the into the jar of water. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Okay, very good. Now I may start with these trees here, so we can go. So I've got my drawing done, and uh, I just have to stay within the the lines, there we go, okay. so, there we go. 
Um, another uh, thing we're thinking about, actually, when we're uh, working on a painting um, and when we're using color that, of course, is, is not in the photograph itself, when we're basically making decisions on what color we're using based on our total freedom of to use whatever colors we want. Um, something that uh, I find quite important is that the, you, um, you, kind of, you, can build, you can start building up your canvas or your, your painting uh, with colors and in different parts. So using the same color in different parts of the painting. Now, of course, we can change this later, but it's, it's a nice way to balance things out. So if the fact that I've got blue up there, um, perhaps to mirror the blue up there with the blue down below uh, is a nice way to um, start building up the composition. And uh, so not only are we working with color, but we're also uh, working with uh, balance as well and a balance of how the colors actually will end up looking on the on the painting so you can use color to create um, balance and contrast um, and this in with abstraction becomes quite a powerful tool because you can kind of create a lot of uh, I suppose energy and uh, a lot of rhythm with visual rhythm in the actual painting itself and um, when you see how the colors kind of uh, speak to each other or respond to each other they're kind of bouncing off off each other there and even though a tree is actually not blue and it should be green and um, you see that there's a blue down here and it kind of also is enough information maybe to give the idea that there's a reflection happening in this painting which of course there is uh, because the trees are in fact reflected in the the, the lake um, here but we're still playing with these little ideas and devices okay so I've got one color down this light blue um, and there's something I quite like doing as well actually and um, before I start getting very creative with what color I do it's quite nice to um, use similar uh, the same color but in different tones like dark and light close to each other and when you do this um, there's a sort of uh, yeah there's, a, there's, a, there's an immediate sort of uh, relationship between these colors that's harmonized together because basically the only difference is that you added a little bit of white to one uh, one type of blue and when you use the darker version of it it's still as you say related to the lighter blue um, and there's a sort of uh, it, it, there's a harmony, there's a kind of a, a color, a chromatic harmony that happens then when you put them together. Uh, that word chromatic or chrome is uh, essentially means color. Uh, like monochrome means like mono, one, one color. So when you have a monochromatic painting, it means you have a painting that's made of just one color. And an interesting observation I just made now is you also have a chromatic in music as well, a chromatic scale, which um, is a scale that uses every single uh, note, all the semitones on the way up and the way down. So it's, uh, it seems to be uh, kind of similar to uh, music and art all the time. Another artist, uh, painter, I suppose worth researching and looking into, you might be interested, uh, who worked abstractly as well, was uh, Kandinsky. And um, he did, he actually did a lot of uh, paintings based on music and uh, this idea of the uh, chromatic colors that were, he was trying to uh, portray music in, in painting and in art. How's that working? I think I'll do this bit here in dark blue as well, and I can always paint over it again in a different color if I'm not happy with it. But I feel for the balance of the painting, I like to have this done. It adds a little bit of weight here to the side. Okay, so um, we got the, some of the blues down already. Uh, and I've just been painting the blue down as, as, as normal, but I'm going to 
experiment here with how we paint. Now we don't always have to use the same type of brush marks. We can start being a little bit more gestural with how we paint. Now that word gestural means a gesture. And a gesture, for example, is a, is a I suppose a body movement. And when we use the term gesture in, in painting, it means that we, uh, we paint in a way that leaves the, a mark of how we, uh, how we applied the paint. So let's be a little bit more freer. Instead of just painting flat, I think with the, um, this, I, I just, I'm using this uh, yellow ochre, which is a sort of browny yellow color, but I want to um, lighten it a little bit. So I'm adding a little bit of white to it. I'm still not ready to start working very dark with bright colors yet. I still want to build this painting up a bit. So, and there we go. So I'm mixing this up. So it's still a bit, you can see the color there. So it's light. So, um, so the way I'm working here is quite gesturally. So, I'm not, as you can see, I'm not trying to be very accurate. I'm leaving a little bit of white in the background, and you can see my, you can see my brush strokes, and that's what I want. I want that to be evident. I want that to be seen when we're done. And something that's quite nice, and I'm going to continue down here, this area here. Uh, so, like I was saying before about. Um, when you're making decisions actually on, like for example, the what colors to use, and I was suggesting that to use uh, similar colors, but slightly different, so they kind of create, um, they kind of create a bit of a tension or there's a, a contrast, you know, there's a sort of a difference that you can see between, you've got the light blue, you've got the dark blue, there's a contrast, there's a difference that's evident. And you don't only achieve this with color, you also achieve it with how you paint, with these gestural marks versus the flatness. So the flat blue, and then you've got this gestural sort of creamy brown color. So it, just, it makes a big difference between one type and the other. And it's already kind of jumping out. So maybe you can do a little bit more in this area over here in the corner. There we go. Okay. And maybe this guy can be also the same color. Okay, so I'm going to um, I'm going to mix uh, another color here that I want to um, I want it to be slightly gray. So gray um, and maybe a little bit of a little bit of red, a little touch of red, which I'm going to just add over there in the corner, which I can bring in now. Uh, the biggest mistake of uh, when you're trying to make a kind of a color gray is adding too much black. You think black is the basic, but it's only a tiny bit of black goes into making gray. Um, and I want to, I also don't want the gray to be a cold, just a normal black and white gray. I want the gray to be mixed with other colors. So I'm bringing a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. And I might need all that black. And so when I mix it with the white, you have a gray, but it's actually uh, there's a there's a there's a color to it, so it doesn't seem like it's um, yeah. There we go. Maybe I'll use that bit again. You can see it there. Okay, let's get this color down. I'm gonna add some water because I want it to be more of a, a wash. And you know, I might use a bigger a bigger brush as well a very heavy brush so it's very wet and i'm going to work it down here but i'm going to do it um these kind of strokes like this now the great thing about um acrylic is that it actually dries very fast it's the difference between working with oil paint and acrylic as you may know is that uh, yeah Acrylic is a, a very fast drying paint because it's water and water dries fast in air where oil is a lot slower at drying. So it takes a lot longer. So for example, it's 
acrylic is fantastic for using for these sort of uh, artworks that you want to make a lot of changes um, and not stick around waiting for it to dry for too long. That's great. Now you might notice that I'm actually painting over the blue. That's fine because we are going to be able to paint back over this colour and we can paint back over the blue with blue. continue up here because it's a very nice sort of background colour I think and at no point uh, as I'm painting am I thinking about the fact that this has to be a painting of a landscape I've completely forgotten about that idea and that's that's what I want to do I want to um, only use the image of the photograph as a starting point and then I when, as soon as I start painting, um, we start asking ourselves different questions, not like, is it looking like the landscape? It's more, I start asking my questions, okay, how are, how are these colours working? What's happening to the painting when I put these colours together? Is it actually changing the appearance of what it originally was? Does it no longer look like a landscape? Maybe now it looks like something entirely different. And this is the beauty of abstraction because it opens uh, the image up to um, inter different interpretations so you can read it differently entirely. Okay, so, so far we've only used blue and this yellow and this grey. So it's not a huge amount of different colours yet. We're, as I said, we're going to start very simple and then start building up and reintroducing new colours. So now I'm going to, I've got a bit of green here. So I want to, and it's a very emerald green I think actually this one here um, so I think it's a bit too bright for me and I'm going to make that a slightly cooler green by adding a bit of black and uh, so black will make the color a little cool not too dark but I use the black just to um, make the, the, the green a little less uh, luminous less vibrant see that Okay. So I want you to explore and experiment with mixing colours as well. For me, colours are very, very interesting and very important um, way of working. And I really believe that everybody has their own um, colour palette. Everyone has a sort of way of using colour that's uniquely theirs. Um, and I think that's a very interesting uh, thing about art actually. Okay, so um, I, we've kind of nearly covered the whole surface, I think. Um, so instead of feeling that you feel, you know, that this is work is done, um, I like the idea of like kind of pushing things a little bit further um, and painting over. And this is one of the things I actually do a lot in my paintings is never really to um, accept that the work is done when you've covered the whole surface. Uh, I like the idea of like pushing it forward and sometimes maybe feeling like you're making a mistake, but um, it's not really, it's never a mistake. There's always ways to solve the problem and you can always fix things. Um, so for example, what I'm going to do now is to paint over some of the paints that we've already put down. Um, and for example, this dark blue, I'm going to see what happens if I uh, paint it slightly grey and lighten it and what happens then because it actually can change the composition and it changes the balance of the painting as well but for me this is an interesting thing because you can actually play with the composition you can make it you can leave little bits I'll leave that little bit there white or blue and I'm going to leave that uh, dark blue in that section there so This now kind of connects with this kind of grey here, which I think is interesting. Um, this light blue that was here, I might uh, make that a little bit, mix a little bit of uh, black and the light blue and see what happens in a bit of green. And make something interesting of this little area here.
So I'm just going to continue uh, experimenting with what we have. So the composition is, is, has been drawn. We've started painting in the colors. And now, for me, this is actually where the abstract painting gets very interesting because you can um, start playing with how the composition looks by uh, painting over and changing your color decisions. So call me crazy, but I'm going to paint over this gray area with this yellow ochre and let's see what happens. Okay, so we've actually done uh, a lot of covering up here. I use this uh, um, yellow ochre actually to kind of connect and tidy up the work, bring it together. So you got a balance up here, you got a balance on the bottom, on the left, and on the right. And sometimes uh, you can use color in this way to really kind of bring it, bring a painting together in that sort of way. I may just go over some of the blue that I painted over originally and see if I can paint over. Uh, bring that blue back and uh, see what happens. That's the one thing about painting it. Like once you've you painted over, you, what you think is a mistake is never a mistake. You can always uh, you can always go back and paint on it, and you you never really have any breakthroughs or successes until you actually take some risks. I think it's really important to um, yeah. Take a lot of risks when you're when you're painting. Be really creative. Okay, that's quite interesting now. I think for me. <laughs> okay, I've added some more yellow on top of this uh, uh, brownie yellow, um, which is interesting to do. And I think it's quite interesting when you uh, actually apply color on top of another color. Uh, a lot of things interestingly things happen. So I'd ask you to. Uh, yeah, explore that again, uh, that idea of like when you put down a color on an area and uh, wait till it dries and then put another color on top and see what happens to that color. It really changes and you have really interesting um, tonal layers then that are coming through, which I think is really beautiful. Right, so um, the painting, I, yeah, as I say, like it's impossible to know when it's done. And some people always ask, like, how do you know a painting is finished? You never really know when a painting is finished. Um, but you can keep on painting on it, uh, keep on making mistakes if you consider them mistakes, or you can keep on trying fixing them. Um, and so I will probably keep on working a little bit more uh, on this until I'm ready. But everybody has a different way of working and everybody has a different uh, way of deciding when something is finished you look at it and you'll go I, li I like that or I don't like it or it feels like there's a uh, something incomplete and when it comes to for me when it comes to abstract uh, art or abstract painting um, the decision to finish your work uh, is often down to um, the way the, the shapes and the composition, the way the, the image is coming together sits, if, there's, if it feels like it's, it's um, so if, if, it, if you're satisfied by the way it looks, the colors are in combination, and if something just isn't working, keep working on it, be patient. Uh, for example, I have decided that this blue here is not working for me, so I'm going to, I'm going in with a sort of an orangey yellow on top, and uh, I'm hoping I might leave a little bit of blue just there to kind of continue on from this. And there we go. And we'll see what happens now. See, for me, that is working. That's working better. So you can have a lot of fun. 
You can have a lot of fun, uh, yeah, making these the, the color decisions and creating new shapes and new objects as you go and using your colors to actually kind of create the these shapes by blocking sections out or uh, painting over a pre-existing color already and see what you can do. Okay, so after your work um, has been left there to dry uh, and the, the tape here uh, should have kept the page secure onto the surface that you're working on. Um, so after I, acrylic as I said before, it dries quite fast but the moisture in the paper might take a little longer so you're better off leaving it overnight to flatten completely dry. <clears throat> um, and then when it, the, it's, it's completely dry, you very carefully peel the, the tape back. Now, I'll just uh, point out that this is a, a potentially risky that you could actually rip the paper. So um, when you're peeling back, um, peel back and pull it out at the same time, like from that angle. So, and do it slowly, so <clears throat> it, there's no danger of you ripping the paper. Okay, so if you just do that at an angle, it's a very satisfying part of this <laughs> uh, project. And again on the other side, just slowly peel it out like that so that you're not ripping the paper and there's no danger of the artwork. Uh, there's no danger to the artwork. Um, okay, same for the top here. And I suppose the other nice thing about this is that you kind of create a nice uh, white border around your work. So it actually looks really, really neat. And I'll just do the bottom. That's the last bit here. Okay. Here we go. So. We have a, a finished finished artwork. I didn't let mine dry for long enough, so it's a little bit buckled, but you get the idea. So that's what it should look like. Now, uh, we worked uh, primarily with <clears throat> just flat colors in this. And uh, as you can see, um, it's uh, the, to make this abstract painting, um, we used, yeah, color and we focused on the line drawing that we originally did on the page to kind of use as a as a guide to what we kind of the different paints and different colours we want to kind of put inside these marks. Now there's another uh, way of working. I I've another example here if you wished, where I did the same with a I started with a simple drawing and instead of using colour, I just uh, with one colour with a red, uh, I just decided to make lines in in the uh, inside the line drawing itself. So you have an alternative way of working in abstraction with a sort of linear way where you've got like uh, a 45 degree angle with a straight or crossways. So you can really have a lot of fun and explore um, that way of working with abstraction. Or if you're like me and you like working with color, you um, yeah have some fun and experiment. You can also do this with coloring pencil. Um, but I really feel that with paint, if you can get your hands on it, you can have a lot more fun and you can make uh, more interesting color combinations quicker and experiments are probably a little bit easier. Uh, okay, so thank you so much um, for uh, spending some time with me and I hope that you enjoyed this workshop and I look forward to seeing some of the work that you produce. So uh, just to conclude, um, I'd like to take this moment to thank you for joining me for this workshop. Uh, I hope you found it interesting and beneficial in some way. Um, I, I would like just to maybe uh, remind you again that uh, it's, it's when you decide to um, experiment with a new type of working, uh, like abstraction, uh, you have Google, you have the internet, I recommend that you go and research abstract art, maybe learn a little bit more about it and find out uh, an artist from this uh, movement, this, this period, this way of working that you really enjoy and you connect with. Um, you can get a lot of inspiration as well from this. There's only so much I can teach you. There's a lot that you can actually find out for yourself. Um, so 
have fun uh, researching, have fun um, experimenting uh, with what you have and feel free to explore um, the medium, whatever you're deciding to work with. Like, feel free just to really, really explore and with colour uh, it's really something that takes a long time to get to know and how to work with it. Well, it's a really fantastic um, part of your art skill to develop. And again, I say it's re I always find a lot of uh, help when I re uh, research from uh, famous works that were already happened in the past. Take take from history, bring it into your studio, and e experiment and um, develop your own uh, way of working and your own palette. I think it's a really really important thing. I would always say. So um, again, I'd just like to say thank you for joining me today. I'd like to thank uh, Loon Gallery and Kulina Nog. Um, for making this possible and also the kind of support and funding from uh, Western County Council and Creative Ireland. Thank you.